When I was a kid, a vacuum was a physical object. Yes, it was. When I heard physicists speak of the vacuum of space, I just imagined all these movers right. in, in the sky. Right. So I didn't know that a vacuum was a thing, was a, was an it was a concept, and then you make a machine that duplicates that thing. I just didn't know that, so I learned. Okay, so a vacuum is where there's basically no air. Generally, you can have some, and we would still classify it as a vacuum. So well, Sagan has famously said Go ahead. that humans are the universe's way to understand itself. The universe is understanding itself through humans. Through humans, correct. Without humans, there'd be no thoughts right. to do that. But, however, that elevates us higher than I'm prepared to do so. You think so? Yeah. Because... Who says we are the measure of what is intelligent in this universe? Well, we do. <laughs> uh, exactly. So we have a quantum entanglement gap between the United States and China. They have, they've been quantum entangling more than we have, and they have the record, the distance record for it. Oh, I understand. Like, like, for like from orbit to Earth's surface. Right, sort of right, right, yeah. right. They found a way to isolate the particles so that they don't get messed mess with. I don't think we command dimension. Yeah, right. We are prisoners within them. Take time, for example. We are a prisoner of the present. Right. Forever transitioning between our inaccessible past and our unknowable future. We don't wield this dimension. We live it. But I was born after the discovery that the heavy elements that populate the universe and including life on Earth, including us, derive from stars that manufactured them in the crucibles that are their cores and then exploded, scattered that enrichment across the galaxy to enable nascent star systems to have the right ingredients to make planets and some planets make... I don't know. <laughs>